And I believe Congress should codify Roe once and for all. Right now, we're short a handful of votes. If you care about the right to choose, then you got to vote. That's why in these midterm elections are so critical to elect more Democratic senators to the United States Senate and more Democrats to keep control of the House of Representatives. And folks, if we do that, here's the promise I make to you and the American people. The first bill that I will send to the Congress will be to codify Roe v. Wade. President Joe Biden today promising to make codifying Roe v. Wade his top priority, the first bill he sends, if Democrats strengthen control of the House and Senate in the midterms just three weeks away. New polling finds that the vast majority, 80 percent of Americans, say abortion is important in determining who they will vote for this November. However, it does rank behind economic issues like inflation that Americans are looking to when deciding who to vote. Joining us now, White House Deputy Chief of Staff Jen O'Malley Dillon. Um, Jen, we were just talking, Michael Steele and Donna Edwards and I, about this this economic argument that doesn't seem to be getting made um, by too many Democrats on the trail. And, and I, you and I both know in local races what, what candidates hate the most is when people in Washington and New York say, hey, here's an idea, but uh, I'll go there anyway. Economies don't flourish in autocracies, and that's where Republicans are seeking to take the country. Do you do you see kind of helping candidates pull all this together, the democracy argument and the economic message from the president's standpoint? Yeah, absolutely. And thanks for having me. It's great to be back with you today. You know, I think the president has been very clear about this as he has talked about the contrast uh, that exists between his vision and Democrat elected officials' vision uh, for the path forward and uh, Republicans and the extreme MAGA agenda, that all of these elements come together. You heard the president today, but you also heard him um, from uh, the day the decision came through on Dobbs about how extreme that was, rolling back 50 years of law, women's rights uh, to their own reproductive health, having politicians make decisions about women's rights uh, in this country. And he made clear today, as he had from the beginning, that what we all need to do is codify Roe, that he certainly tasked the administration with doing everything possible to protect women's rights. Uh, he has been doing that, and the administration's been doing that, whether it's access access to reproductive care now, access to travel, protecting privacy, but ultimately we have to codify Roe. And that is part of a larger agenda uh, that we see. You hear Senator Lindsey Graham talking about a national ban. Uh, you hear immediately Republicans talking about uh, rolling back uh, the Inflation Reduction Act, which sole purpose is to help make life easier for the American people by lowering costs like prescription drugs and health care. Uh, so those are the issues that he really sees and has set up very clearly from the beginning about what that contrast is and the issues that really affect the American people. You'll hear more from him tomorrow uh, on the economy, uh, and he's talking about all of those pieces together under this broader contrast, uh, you know, that, that we see every day here and the American people are feeling. The numbers, the public opinion polling on abortion is just extraordinary. Um, let me put these up for our viewers. This is um, uh, numbers of Americans who believe that women should be able to have an abortion in cases of rape or incest. Among Democrats, 94 percent. Among independents, 88 percent. Um, among Republicans, 76 percent. Many of the state bans being pushed by Republicans um, eliminate all exceptions for life of the mother and the um, instances of rape and incest. And the real world examples of young girls, 10 year olds having to cross state lines are so harrowing. When that was in the news immediately following the Dobbs decision, it was front and center for the national conversation. And, and you, you read local coverage of it as well. Is there a, a, a is today's speech part of an effort to remind voters of what happened not too long ago with the Supreme Court? Well, I think it is certainly an incredibly important issue, as you've referenced and as the president has heard as he's traveled across the country. Uh, people have talked about this to him, women and men. Uh, this is not just a woman's issue, as you well know. Uh, and it's not it's not just a, an issue for one party or another. And so what we um, you know, believe and what we're seeing with the president's hearing is how critical this is and how it is such a significant example of that contrast. Uh, and it is not just uh, what, you know, what needs to happen to codify Roe. 
show. You know, you, you look at, you know, as I already mentioned, Senator Graham and a national ban, um, 16 states that have uh, more extreme uh, bans with no exceptions moving forward. I mean, we're talking about in Wisconsin and Arizona, uh, laws that have been on the books since the 1800s now, um, you know, having Republican elected officials uh, pushing to have those move forward. And on top of the chaos uh, that is existing on whether or not somebody can get a prescription for something that has nothing uh, to do with reproductive health, but it's got it, gotten caught up in this confusion that's been created. So I think fundamentally, uh, the president knows that we have to talk about issues that matter most to the American people. Uh, he is really reflecting on what he hears as he's traveling the country. Uh, this is part of a bigger uh, contrast, as, as I've said, uh, that really ties into what is at stake and that extreme um, uh, agenda on uh, the uh, Republican elected officials that they've made abundantly clear. And he wants to make sure that we continue to talk about the things that uh, we believe the American people have a right to hear about, uh, that they are concerned about their own rights. Uh, and that really ties into the broader um, you know, economic conversation. All of these pieces, as you've noted and your panel noted before, are interconnected. And that's what he's talking about.